Hey everybody, um, welcome back to the journey. Um, we are building a genetic genetic genealogy handbook and uh, we are utilizing family tree DNA uh, projects to help us um, get through some goals that we want to make with uh, the Redbone Heritage Foundation, uh, Redbone Ancestry, which and, and Melungeons are also included in that. Dominickers, Brass Ankles, Seminoles, Gullah Geechees, um, Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw. Uh, you want to go back to the Nassimons. Um, you know, it, even earlier than those, I, I believe that we do have connections to nearly every single Native American tribe uh, since free contact, basically. Um, let's talk about the first initial things. We've had a lot of questions that have come up, and they're good questions of um, some basic uh, things that people are needing to know and understand so that they can participate and learn the most about their genealogy and their genetics. Okay, so we're going to start today um, with the mirror study. And we're going to work through the different testings and what do they mean. And then we're going to talk about why you should DNA and what these what these tests will tell us and what they won't tell us. Um, establishing progenitor lines, males, females, and couples, and uh, the requirements also to participate beginning in 2019. Um, so we're going to talk about a lot. Uh, we're going to probably get over here to this side pretty quickly today and, and get through some things. Um, but first, we're going to start with this. Um, the mirror study is based on, actually, we're using the platform of the Family Tree DNA um, Project's um, base pro program that they use. And so what they look at and what they display is the Y-DNA results, the MT-DNA results. These are the only um, studies that they display and that they they look. They use the autosomals through Family Finder and things like that, and the admixtures. But as far as their projects, is based on Y and mtDNA. And um, then, of course, I'm going to explain haplo very quickly. Okay. So first of all, Y DNA and mtDNA basically work the same. Uh, let me clear off part of this board. Um, uh, I hope everybody remembers what we wrote here, um, especially me, because I gotta uh, have to explain it in just a little while. So uh, I've got um, an upset canine in the other room. I may have to stop and tend to her, um, but this is just informal. Um, just question and answer. If you've got questions, post those up on the events, the journey. Um, we're going to we're gonna do these all until, you know, all the time from now on, basically. We used to do a blog talk, and all of those are archived, and you can go back and look at those. We had great guests like um, Scott Sewell. He hosted several of them for uh, a number of weeks. Uh, Scott Withrow, we've had Marco Williams, we've had um, Marilyn Baguette, Kogliaka, um, and Tom Kingery, and, um, you know, several different people, uh, uh, Joanne Pazula and people like that did uh, uh, give some commentary as well. Okay, so we're going to talk about why DNA and mtDNA. And I think everyone is kind of struggling with a pedigree and or a check call. So this is why we need all, this is why we need a check call is for autosomals, mtDNA, and yDNA. Because uh, check call is a free service where all of us can get re our, our raw DNA autosomals uploaded. But in uh, the, the um, Family Tree Project looks at these. Even though they have Family Finder, they're not universal for 
anybody who's got raw DNA. They're just for people who participate with family tree DNA. And so we want to move all of this autosomals, you know, and basically use GEDmatch, which is a free service to everyone, and Genesis um, for our cousin matching. So we've got a universal look. Excuse me. Y-DNA and MT-DNA basically follow the maternal line or the maternal line. So, this is how you would work on a pedigree to establish the male, the male and the female line of your, if you're a male, you will carry you, your father's Y DNA and you will carry your mother's empty DNA. If you're a female, you only carry your mother's empty DNA. Y DNA is an empty DNA are both, excuse me, um, are both carried down from the, from the female line or the male line ancestor exactly 100% the same from mother to child or father to son. Okay, so when you buy DNA and empty DNA, it is not necessary for you to test your empty DNA and test your mother's empty DNA because they're both the same. It is not necessary for a Y DNA male to test himself and his son Y DNA because it's going to be exactly the same. Of course, unless you have a paternity issue up the line, and then we kind of have to backtrack and work that out, which we have several of those um, cases we're working right now. And um, we're helping people move forward and connect backwards on both of these MT and Y DNA. Okay, so a pedigree starts with you. You are number one. And if you have um, Ancestry.com, which most of our members, you know, work at Ancestry, um, you can get this in a form called a GEDCOM file. And it's where you've worked on your family tree and you can put it into a file that I can read because I have the software to read it. And then I can create these charts for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Or for me and for Gay Lynn if she needs them because they are critical and autosomal as well. We really need these charts especially, well not especially, but critically for all three of these things. We need this pedigree or a JEDCOM where we can create this chart for you. Okay, Y DNA and MT DNA is passed 100% replicated from father to son and from mother to child. Males carry Y DNA and their mother's MT DNA, however, they, they do not pass MT DNA on, they only pass Y DNA. MT, uh, females only carry MT DNA. So, all right. Now, here are you. <laughs> here I am. And this is, um, um, I'm going to use myself for this one because I'm, I'm so familiar with, with my, um, with my ancestry or my pedigree that it would probably be beneficial that you see it that way. So, this is me, or you. I was born a stringer. That's my main name. Now my mother's, or my empty DNA line, would be my mother. My mother was P. Joanne Rutherford. And I apologize about the lighting, but um, I've got a little natural lighting and it changes all day long. So 
I did my best to try to get the line with it. This is me. This is my mother. So I would have inherited my empty DNA from my mother. Exactly 100% replicated from, from her mother. It was Marjorie. I know this is spelled like Joan, but it was pronounced Joanne. My grandmother, my mother's mother, was in was Marjorie Joanne Perry. Okay, and so my mother inherited my empty DNA from her mother, and then she inherited it from her mother. It was Lizzie Whitehead, or Whited. They went by Whited, W-I-W-H-I-T-T-E-D, Whited. Um, but it was a corruption of Whitehead. And then her mother, her mother was a Melton, and I can't think of her name right now. And then her mother was a Mitchell. And that's as far back as I get. That's as far back as I know. Okay, um, I do, I have had my empty DNA done, or my sister had her empty DNA done, so I use those um, values and those scores. Um, but I do need to work on this line. Um, because we had a suicide here. Um, Melissa Melton committed suicide, and um, she was referred to as a half-blood Indian, half-bred Indian, and I did not be, know that, you know, I mean, we had this legend over here, but then uh, we returned with a, a basically Native American half-blood group for my mother, which was a shock, and so this Mitchell down here um, was obviously uh, had a Native American mother, so she probably was a half breed. Okay, so this is exactly a maternal line. This is the only way that mtDNA is inherited. Besides, I mean, you're going to get it in your autosomals, your overall DNA, but as far as when we concentrate on the female chromosome, this is the way it's inherited 100% intact. There's very little, there's very little genetic drift in maternal. You will, um, I'll explain SMPs a little later, which is um, location, location markers of where that uh, allele is common. Okay, and so this is me and this is my maternal line for mtDNA. And then this would be uh, Y-DNA. This would be the exact Y-DNA that, you know, males pass from male to son. So my father was Carl Springer. And this is why we call Y-DNA a surname line. Because Y DNA is passed from father to son, just like mother to child, exactly 100% replicated for tens of thousands of years. So, this is why it's important that we look at the Y and the empty DNA. My father's father was Leonard. Stringer. His father was Doc Willis, and so forth and so on, up, up the, matern or the paternal line, uh, to as far back as you can go. I mean, we don't all know who, you know, I mean, beyond these shores, I, I don't know, because there are no stringers, even though my dad was um, 
RM269 or something like that, which is an Irish hot blow. Um, we're not jumping the pond all that often on these Y DNAs, and it's because of the fact that we know that the stringer came to Jamestown and did marry into the Pocahontas line. Pocahontas had one son who returned back to the United States and went back to, or excuse me, to the colonies at that time and did re, re, uh, go back and marry among his mother's people. And so there was, a, he only had daughters and one of those daughters married a stringer. Well, these men, along with many other men who were mixed bloods in Jamestown, were pretty much cast out. And so their um, status as far as documentation and that, um, I think Tom Pingree came up with a list of 50 men that were removed from Jamestown for having children with Native Americans. And so um, it absolutely happened. And so all of you people that are crazy about got to have a paper trail. Yeah, paper trail's great. But when you run into these blocks of generation of males and females who were mixed bloods out of the early Jamestown records or anywhere in the colonies um, and or even into early America, these people were not documented. I'm sorry to say, even though I know this stringer line goes back to Ireland, straight back to probably a convict ship, you know, um, when we jump the pond and we look at these male lines, uh, like the GOI and GS, Mr. Mac and Maryland's line, um, there are no more left in Europe. And so we're not making the matches over there unless they were a family of substantial means or royalty, they didn't generally remain. I mean, all of those people were removed. You know, you have the females that you can jump back over the pond on, quite a few of them because like I say, females pass mother to child, but um, all children. Um, but it's the males, we're just not seeing them like we should. So there is no stringer in Europe who matches my father's Y DNA, but he does have several Y DNA stringers here. I haven't noticed any uh, that were not stringers that matched us. So. Um, now on the empty DNA, as far as following the empty DNA line, um, lines, uh, empty DNA is, is invaluable. However, it's a little bit different uh, study um, than what you're probably accustomed to with normal genealogical practices. And so you kind of have to think a little forward and progressive from your basic normal genealogical practice uh, research. And so I know most of you have already gotten very creative with your research um, because uh, you're from mixed bloods and it takes that sort of creative research, a preponderance of evidence, which is generally not acceptable. These are things that we have to utilize because it's all we have. And so um, uh, that's good. Okay, so this is a, a, a Y DNA line or a surname line. Y DNA only follows father to son intact for tens of thousands of years. Female lines is passed mother to child intact and is carried on by the female. But this is the only lines that are considered for empty DNA or Y DNA. Okay, so if you have any more questions about that, you know, just try to get with me. But I need for everyone to try to kind of keep up a little bit and uh, learn a little bit about the different testing. Autosomal. Autosomal testing, which is Family Finder, JetCom. This is an, actually a study of the entire, your entire genome. All right? And so this is, and what we call those is alleles. And then these alleles, there's little small blocks of DNA that make up each allele, okay? And so autosomal testing is a look at your overall genome, not your mother line and your father line, or father line and mother line. But I'm gonna 
be really clear here. Everybody thinks that there's some magic thing with autosomals that tell you admixture because the test that they use to look at your admixture is actually the autosomal and a complete study of what we know. Autosomals admixture is not a separate test. Autosomal testing is a look at your completed genome. Admi autosomal admixture is a study of your autosomals and you'll get they'll get they get the report like I said that will show your alleles okay well alleles are reported into your worldwide autosomal database and you can use different they can use different panels to compare your alleles so what they do is they take chromosome one, let's just say, and you, you know this from looking at gen match stuff, chromosome one, chromosome two, chromosome three, like that. And then they'll say, these are the alleles reported for your genome. To get admixture, they look at chromosome one alleles And they say, who are these alleles common among? What population of the world are these alleles common? They say, chromosome one, you have a little block on your allele and it's common, that little block of, of people mixture is common among Italians. Okay, well. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Let me turn this up in the straw for a minute. Because I feel a sneeze coming on here. It's blowing right in my face. Okay, so these alleles these little blocks on your alleles are common among Italians. Okay. Well, first of all, who are the, uh, when you get a hit like this, we talked about this before. Uh, Italy is a country and Italians are just people who live in a country. Okay. It's just a geographic region. All right. And so, when you say I have a match to an to uh, an Italian, let's go back and study who are the Italian people. Okay, who are the current modern population of Italians? They are a big mix of people. Who are they historically? Where did they come from? Because remember, DNA is only a study of migration, human migration. It is nothing more than a study of human migration as far as this type of DNA testing, right? When you look at your autosomals and you have common alleles with someone else, that's how you make a, a cousin connect. That's how you make a gen match connect right there is because you have an autosomal that in your genome that is the exact same as someone else's genome. And so this is how we get the, in GEDCOM, we get these matching segments on chromosome, whatever, whatever. Um, this is, this is how that works. I hope that that helps a little bit. Um, but we're going to be moving on from that. Um, so I hope that helps with autosomal Y and MTDNA. 
and why they're all important to us and the study. Okay. Half low assignment. Half low assignment. We just talked about Y DNA and mtDNA is a, a, just a, an intense look at your male input, your male surname line, or your female. And haplo equals origin. Or a geographic location. geographic location of where that maternal mtDNA came from or that surname came from. Haplo assignment um, is, is I think is the most interesting study that we have, but I'm particular about why in mtDNA. I love making Cousin Connects, but I'm a little bit not up on that stuff yet. I've been looking at a lot of this mtDNA and yDNA making matches between male and female progenitors of our group, of our tribe of people. And so, um, uh, the expert on this is Galen. And so, I leave it to her and I'm, I slag behind and I learn this and that. And her and I, you guys would be crazy with our phone calls because we'll talk to each other at 2 o'clock in the morning and we're talking about, yeah, but I compared this kit to this kit and it was on chromosome 2 and it was, you know, total segments and uh, not total segments. And we're, we're learning. She's teaching me a lot and I'm learning a lot. I continue to educate myself on this situation. And if you're serious about DNA testing or moving past those brick walls, in our common ancestry, it's very important that you participate and that you kind of keep up on this stuff and learn. We'll try to help you along as best we can. Um, now, we're going to do haplo. Well, I'm only going to go for an hour today, and we're not going to have three different separate videos and all of that fun stuff. I wanted to... I wanted to do... Um, I wanted to um, to do that last week, but we had some technical difficulties, and I do apologize for that menagerie of different things. And then in the end, everybody came in for the evening and walked right through my video. I was like, "Well, thank you." <laughs> so uh, that got a little. But we're just home down. We're not. Um, this is not a formal lecture and by any way, shape, or form. If you have a group of historians or people who, you know, family members who would like to learn more about DNA testing, um, Galen and I are for hire and um, we do speak on different occasions um, to genealogical groups and histor historical gathering groups. And so, um, we will do that. We will come and try to help you through. And um, if you have a study or something you'd like to get started, why well, get together with me? Because um, we would surely like to help. And uh, that is the main goal of the Red Bone Nation, is to bring us all back together. Because in 2002, um, after studying all of these families for about 30 years, I looked over and I was like, these people are all related. You know, I mean, I just too much commonality. And so now, through DNA, we are proving that. So, we're going to talk about why to DNA. What do you want to know is the bigger question of what, why you should DNA. Okay, I think it's a marketing trick to get people to uh, buy direct-to-consumer to, um, testing kits. Um you know, find out what your origins are and push the little green leaf and all of that stuff. Okay, well, that's just marketing tools, people. And and so, entertainment value only. Um, all of these autosomals that say, you know, I'm 
English or I'm from Switzerland or wherever, you know, that, and, and that's probably true, but you must understand that that is a pretty uh, wide view and also it's not an intense look at your genome, but kind of a wide view of your genome, and which is very complex. And so, um, why you should DNA is what do you want to know about your family? Do you want to collect, do you want to uh, identify your progenitor lines and your maternal lines? Do you want to find cousins, immediate and distant? Okay. All of those are, those are your personal reasons why you want to test. And so, um, I personally think uh, you know, it's, it's all three are just as vital as the other. So, um, but cousin connect is dead match is just fascinating to me. So the bigger question is why do you want to test? What do you want to know? And then you can think about, should I empty DNA? Should I Y DNA? You'll start working over your family pedigrees. You will start realizing that, Hey, my cousin's mother was, a foremother for this most foremother was um, Hannah Sweat. Um, and hey, sh my cousin's mtDNA is important to us as a tribe. Okay, so my dad's mother was a Nash, and my dad's mother's mother, her mother was a Goings, and her mother was, um, and I can't even think now. Sanford, and they came out of South Carolina with the rest of us, and, and then it goes all the way back to a Dixon woman, and then we've moved through mtDNA. I have actually found a much older mother who was a 100% match for this mother. Now, my job is to find out how this, my, my furthest grandmother came from that woman or her sister. Okay, so we're jumping backwards here, and it's a little bit, but this helps us establish the progenitors and the, um, you know, maternal progenitors and the couples, too, because another big issue that we have among our people is that they intermarried with one another, someone's spouse died, and they married the next, you know, of kin, you know, so forth in the same group of people. And so, um, you know, we all show, um, also we had a lot of countrymen and squaw men in our, um, amount, what they called mountain men, squaw men out West and what we call countrymen, you know, in the South, the Southeast. Um, these men were fur traders and Indian traders, and they had multiple wives all over. And then we also have the women called the chair raw trade girls or the Lawson trade girls. And these were girls who moved among the fur trading um, culture and who had children with many men. And that was their little, their lifestyle, and and there's no shame in any of that, except that we are trying to, you know, we'll see. We have a common grandfather, but we don't have a common grandmother. If you get a Jed match hit, uh, Brandon Nash and I were looking at ours the other day, and we share one full set of grandparents, but on another side, we only share one paternal line and we don't share the mother and what ended up happening was that we had three matching segments well that makes sense if you have three matching segments with someone you have and two of them are like three three and one of them is five okay so three three was a couple and five was one of the other Either it's on the X or it's not. So either it's a maternal or a paternal. Why is DNA testing important to, why a pedigree is important to this study? Auto, everybody's done autosomals. Like I said, that was a big marketing thing that's been around for 
I don't know, a number of years, and they hit us really hard, you know, around holidays, find out who you are, and blah, 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 which is all a bunch of nonsense, ridiculous nonsense. But anyway, they study your genome, and then you can get your raw DNA. You can move it over to JetMatch, which is a free tool, and you can find out everything about where those people came from, what was the input, at what chromosome, um, and we'll go into in-depth studies of how to work your autosomal admixture, you know, in future. Um, but why the pedigree is so important is, is because the autosomal cousin connects, um, which we all use this free tool, GEDmatch, and it absolutely helps you make cousins because when you look at this complete genome, Here's your genome, and this is your this is a study of your autosomal gene, your genetic autosomals. Okay, so it's a study of your entire genome, and you don't uh, you don't have a pedigree. You haven't started. your you're an adoptee and you don't know where to start. Well, you just start with yourself. And um, hopefully other people have tested because like I say, it's been a big marketing thing. So you have a lot of cousins you can make and you can put your trees back together. But why a pedigree is so important to this is because if I go over and I have a match with, um, which I've been doing this ever since we set up the mirror group. You know, I have all these matches with these people, but I don't know how do they fit into my genealogy or how I fit into their genealogy. And so without a pedigree, without that basic genealogy work done, you cannot figure it out. We cannot figure it out. And so you're not going to get anywhere with this. Absolutely not going to get anywhere, and, let, and I don't care if you come in our study or not, you best need to learn basic genealogy practices so that you can figure it out. Um, I don't care if you're in my study or not, it's important to uh, document your family lines. I'm not big for ancestry, but uh, all of you or a lot of people are and familiar with the platform and that kind of thing. And so there are ways to get your work together to get it to us through a GEDCOM file. But your genome, you're going to say you say you have a match with me on chromosome six. And you have a match with um I'm just gonna make up somebody. Um Ronnie on chromosome six. And you have a match with Judy on chromosome six. This is how we build the Lazarus projects that are coming out. I don't know, 2019, I'm really working on this, but we have to establish these kinds of things so that we actually can build the Lazarus project. And we'll talk more about the Lazarus project as we go. But what the Lazarus basic project is, is that we will take the common ancestor here because we've done our work. I have, I have these matching people on chromosome six and which, and, and everybody's got their own centimorgans. Um, let's say I'm 50 centimorgans, meaning that that's my third great grandparents. It's Stacy's third great grandparents. It's Ronnie's sixth great grandparents. And it's Judy's second grandparent, great grandparents. Okay, now we can figure all of that in if you have a pedigree chart, flow chart to chart all of your ancestors out. We can go, oh, chromosome six must be the duals because we all intersect there. Did we have matching segments between two? This is stuff me and this is stuff me and um, Galen work on. 
um, it's a little advanced, but it can be done. But this is how it's done. But say say that we all match, and it's we know this is the dual family, the common ancestor is the dual couple. Let's say it's a full couple. <clears throat> then we can build what's called a Lazarus project for this couple and actually build a kit with a kit number for James Dole. That's pretty crazy, people. That would find thousands <coughs> of people who connect at James Dole and Kizzy Asher Whoever it was he married. I can't remember right now. Um, but that's okay. You get my meaning. So all of this not only is important to discovering your genealogy through your pedigree and where you share it, but it'll also, as a tribal people, help us start studying these progenating couples and males and females. And um, it'll move our genealogy. It'll move your personal genealogy way on up. Okay, and let's see, I wanted to go over the requirements, requirements for the journey. Okay, we're just, we're just going to keep on at it, stay on topic here, because I've gotten distracted a few times, and now Galen and I are working together, and our collective knowledge, um, it's pretty awesome with you guys' collective knowledge, with all of our collective, we're going to get places. We're going to bust down all of these brick walls that have been holding the Red Bone people, the Melungeon people, uh, back for a long, long time. The requirements for the journey next year are going to be, you're going to have to buy a handbook. You know, it's going to be... Uh, probably a 70 or $75 handbook, but it will be everything that we need, and we will update this handbook every year. You will record your pedigree in it, so you've got that handy. It will be a book that you work in at home, and that you can, at your leisure, look at JEDCOM matches and um, things like this, and you'll have a place to record those and where they where we were talking about what chromosome did they come in and how far away are they distant? Are they in an MRCA match? And we'll talk about MRCA matches because I think there's a little bit of misunderstanding there too, but we'll, we'll straighten it out. Requirements are going to be a handbook current for that year. which will give you worksheets, membership applications, and once you register, you register your membership because people may buy this book. Uh, I've got a lot of people who are not Red Bones and they want it, you know, but they don't have to work through the Red Bone um, and part of it, they just use it for their, and we may change the name and take Redbone off of it um, because it kind of confines us to one people, and it's not. It's just to help us. But once your membership applications are sent in, they will be like a removable page, you know, cut it out, tear it out, mail it in with your pedigree. either chart. What I will do is there will be um, a pedig two pedigree charts, one for you to keep and work in, and it'll be like a 10 anti chart, and then we'll have a pedigree chart in there that you will mail back into us. But however, also we will, we would like to have a JEDCOM because then we can build the charts that we need um, but a pedigree is perfectly fine too, but JITCOM is just a little more handy for us whenever we have 
specialized charts we need to build for your, say, for your maternal line or your paternal line like that. All right. And, and they're invaluable for autosomal jet match. I mean, you cannot go anywhere without this information. We're not going to find anything out. You have to make it. You have to build it. You have to do it. Um, we'll help you. We provided forms, but if you just can't get it or you're having trouble with it, so let us know. We'll, we'll walk through it. I'll talk to you on the phone and record what I need from it. Um, so uh, the pedigree is, is, is going to be, if you have a haplo assignment, great. If you have a GED match, which not all of my Y DNA and MT, M, L I DNA and MT DNA is not you can't upload that raw DNA to GEDmatch. Only autosomals. So when I say that, you know, that we have a Y DNA study and an empty DNA study, those people are not on here and um, on GEDmatch and vice versa. If you have autosomal tested and not empty DNA or Y DNA, um, you're not going to be in the autosomals. The autosomals don't work for mtDNA or yDNA, okay? Because you're going to get, and then if you have, you know, done your yDNA or your mtDNA, we want a certificate of DNA for y and mtDNA. This, what this does is, is, is that you're going to, we've talked about this one on the first one, your certificate of DNA, Y-DNA, and MT-DNA tells us exactly your DYS numbers for a male or your, and we talked about this and I looked it up and I've forgotten again, you have an ACTG score on the mother's. If you take those reported numbers and you compare them to other Y DNA samples or other MD DNA samples, if you are a match, that means you guys share common grandmother, regardless uh, or grandfather, regardless if you have that surname or um, if you know those people. It doesn't matter um, if you recognize them. So. Surname lists are not valuable to us. Really and truly, surname lists are not valuable to us because we don't know how you fit in that surname. All right, you're going to be required to give us a pedigree, and we'll put that in the handbook. Um, you're going to, if you've got a JEDCOM number, we need that. If you've got a haplo group, we need that. And if you have a certificate of MT or Y DNA, we would like to have a copy of that. And these are going to be the requirements. And we're just going to keep helping everybody try to learn um, as we go. And uh, I just wanted to straighten out a few things today. I know I was supposed to do this yesterday, but I had some exciting stuff with the Seminoles down at Fort Bracketville and uh, William Goins. And Marilyn is coming. Uh, here uh, on the 17th and we'll probably do just a just a meeting between her and I and I talk about the Goins book and uh, how we're moving forward with Y DNA testing. Josh uh, Goins has also uh, done his Y DNA and we got some really neat new things that have come up and and we're really, really moving forward with the Y and the mtDNA and as well, uh, the, the JEDCOM before the book is even out. Uh, you will be registered if you want to join next year, you can. If you join the journey and get your handbook, I will do a complete mtDNA. Y DNA and an admixture autosomal. I will look at that for you. 
and Galen will look at your jet match. I will look at Haplos and basically give you an exact an exact genetic report and we will also be available for consultation you know on a reasonable level for one year but um, every time that the way once we get the, these established for everybody and we get your your um, you know your genetic consulting um, report from us we if we have say say we have a new discovery in the Y DNA of your line or related to you because we're gonna have your pedigree we're gonna have your whole pedigree we're gonna know if you are related if you're from the Goins the sweats you know, um, the dials, the duels, you know, the Ashworths or whatever. If we find new matches and, and we make new discoveries about DNA and uh, the, that line is DNA, um, we will actually send you an update, you know, on your family's not just Y DNA and MT DNA, but as well, you know, any update that we might might get on your known uh, DNA scores and your participation and so that'll be good but um, the, the, we got to get a little bit of a handle you know on these um, participants so it doesn't get away with us we really want to study our main focus groups uh, establishing maternal paternal lines and then all the genealogy in between because um, we may have a couple over here which we found this several times we have a couple over here and we have a list of kids and then this person over here matches in here okay well we know we're missing a kid there's no doubt about it and so we're adding children taking hey this kid actually didn't match and he belongs over here that's happening as well and so on the Y DNA study um, I'm absolutely uh, establishing all the different lines, paternal progenitors. And even though they share common surnames, and we thought for many, many years that they came from the same man, they did not. And trust me, it happened a lot with our families. Because like I say, from about 1600 until, you know, late into the 1900s even you know these people were marginalized and they were um had a lot of children and didn't always stay with one wife or the other and that is my chime time is up thank you so much for joining us galen and i appreciate it i think galen's going to be here next week we may do a few more if we have some specific questions or whatever that that are coming up and popping up and we sure hope you join us for the journey because we think we are going to discover some fantastic new things about all of our collective genealogy and our families and we surely want to share it with you and um, thanks again for stopping by we'll see you next week thanks